Welcome to Solicited Advice to Live Your Best Life. I'm your host, Kate Hess. You're in the right place if you're tired of feeling stressed, anxious, and overwhelmed, or if your critical inner voice is the loudest voice in your head. Join me each week for actionable, healthful, and healing habits based in mental and emotional hygiene practices to help you turn your self-criticism into self-love. And along the way, bring more freedom, serenity, resilience, and joy into your life. I'm a mental and emotional hygiene coach, and I'm thrilled to join you each week to answer your questions and help you live your best life. Welcome back to the second half of our two-part discussion on your authentic voice. If you missed last week, you might want to pause this episode and go back and listen to that one before coming back here. Last week, we covered how to find your authentic voice. And this week, I'm answering the second half of the question that was posed. Today's questioner asks, once I've found it, how do I speak my authentic voice with confidence? As I noted at the end of last week's episode, simply finding your authentic voice isn't always enough to begin using it with confidence. Think about driving a car or riding a bike. Just because you had a handle on the general concept didn't keep you from feeling a little nervous the first time you actually did it. In order to speak your authentic voice with confidence, it often requires learning to trust that you do have the right to your own opinion and voice, and then practicing so you can express yourself authentically with confidence. Last week, we talked a lot about the stories and beliefs which keep your authentic voice muffled. Often, those stories are also barriers that keep you from using your authentic voice once you've found it. For example, if you identified a belief that in order to be a good partner, you had to prioritize the needs of your significant other over your own, you might find you struggled to state what you wanted for dinner or where you wanted to go on vacation. Simply recognizing that story exists is powerful. It allows you to begin questioning it, which is important in order for you to release it. Begin asking yourself, is it really true that to be a good partner, your needs always come second? Can you find any reasons why that might not be true? Or why something else might be equally or more true? For example, does your partner feel burdened trying to make those decisions for both of you? Might it not help them out if you vocalized what you wanted or needed? Working through these stories and beliefs helps you begin to build a trust in your right to have your own opinion and voice. This process requires a lot of self-reflection, as well as the ability to step out of your own experience and get some insight into what others are experiencing. It can be really helpful to work with a coach who can help you see all the perspectives you might not yet have access to. If that's something you're interested in, I'd love to help. I'll add a link in the show notes to book a personal roadmap discovery session with me to get started. You can also work through your stories and beliefs with a trusted friend or loved one, someone who can hold a safe space for you to be vulnerable while also reflecting back to you what you might not be able to see. Not everyone is in a place where they can do this for you. This isn't about judging or placing value. It's simply about bringing awareness to where someone is at in their own journey. For instance, if many of the stories you're working through are ones you learned by watching your mom, and your mother is still struggling with the same stories, no matter how loving your relationship is, she might not be in a place where she can help you process and release those stories right now. As you're learning to use your authentic voice, it's important to recognize the people in your life who are cheerleaders and the ones who are fear leaders. Cheerleaders are the people who will support you, who will cheer you on as you begin to use your authentic voice. When you tell a friend you really don't like the restaurant they picked out for your weekly dinner, they'll say, wow, I didn't know that. Thanks for telling me, where would you like to go? Fear leaders are the people in our lives who are struggling with their own stories and beliefs in a way they can't be there to support you during this part of your journey. When you tell a fear leader that you've decided to start painting again because it's something you loved as a child, they might respond by saying, why would you waste your time doing that? It's not like you're going to become a famous artist or anything. When you take a step back, this comment is a reflection of the struggle the fear leader is having in giving themselves permission to express their creativity in their own way. 
Some people will be cheerleaders across the board, some in specific areas of your life, and others are in a place where they can only show up as a fear leader right now. It's really important to remember that with fear leaders, their responses are almost always fueled by their own fears and insecurities. They don't want to be left behind. They don't want you to grow and change because it makes it painfully obvious when they're not growing and changing. And usually, this is all happening in the background. They might be aware of the feelings it produces, but not usually the thoughts and stories that cause them to react the way they do. Having said that, while it's totally appropriate to have compassion for a fear leader, it's also important to create healthy boundaries around how you engage with them. As you're learning to use your authentic voice, you may want to focus on conversations where you feel supported and not where you anticipate being met with fear. Having compassion for someone is different than simply taking whatever they're handing out. If you want to learn more about fear leaders and cheerleaders, I'll add a link to a blog post in the show notes that dives into this topic in greater detail. As with most of the things we talk about, the more you do something, the easier it will become and the more comfortable you'll feel doing it. You've got to build up the muscle of using your authentic voice in order to speak with it confidently. Start out using it with your cheerleaders. It can also be helpful to practice using your authentic voice on decisions that carry a limited weight, perhaps suggesting the next book your book club reads and letting them know why you think it's a good pick. The more you use it and discover people want to hear what you truly think and feel, the easier it will be to confidently speak with your authentic voice. One of the most powerful tools in my toolkit, which helps me speak clearly and confidently, is my connection to my intuition. When I tap into my intuition, I trust that the information I'm receiving is in my best interest and I will benefit from acting upon it. When you start working with your authentic voice, it can be easy to second guess yourself. Are you actually speaking with your authentic voice? A great way to help remove the second guessing and more deeply connect with your authentic voice is to learn how to listen to and trust your intuition. I covered the science behind your intuition in episode 7 of the podcast. And if you're worried you aren't sure what your intuition sounds like, check out my Intuition 101 course. I cover several different techniques to help you tap into your intuition and learn to trust the messages it offers. And podcast listeners save 25% on the course when you use the code PODCAST at registration. I'll add a link to learn more and register for Intuition 101 in the show notes. When you regularly use your intuition, it allows you to trust that you really are tapping into your authentic voice, and that, in turn, can bring additional confidence to your ability to speak from that place. We've talked a lot about thinking-based tools and techniques to help you build your confidence in speaking with your authentic voice, but there are a number of physical practices which can also be transformative in building this confidence. The reason why is summed up beautifully in this quote from Carolyn Mace. Your biography, that is, the experiences that make up your life, becomes your biology. Your body contains your history, every chapter, line, and verse of every event and relationship in your life. Take a moment and think about how you stand when you feel unsure about what you're about to say or the posture you might have taken when you were speaking from your stories instead of from a place of your authentic voice. Now think about how you stand when you're feeling confident in what you have to say, when you know you can speak your authentic voice and it will be heard and respected. The different ways we hold ourselves can lead us to develop tightness and tension in our muscles, which might make it harder for us to confidently speak with our authentic voice. Think about the parts of your body connected to the actual vocalization of your words. Your throat and jaw are the conduit by which you move air from your lungs and out of your mouth, shaping it into words. And there's a link between the jaw and the hip. During embryonic development, the two are connected and remain connected. A study published in the Journal of Manipulative and Physiological Therapeutics actually demonstrated that relaxation in one can lead to a greater range of motion in the other. So working with throat, jaw, and hip opening exercises 
can help release some of the tension which might prevent you from speaking your authentic voice with confidence. To help you target these areas, I've put together a 30-minute yoga class focusing on releasing physical tension which might be preventing you from using your authentic voice with confidence. It's the bonus for this week's episode, and I'll include the link for the video in the show notes. Often, I offer tools and techniques you can do with little more than some quiet time and a piece of paper and something to write with. But it's also important to recognize when to seek support. There have been several techniques I've found to be incredibly helpful in assisting me in learning to speak my authentic voice with confidence. Many of these techniques have been provided as services I've received in working with teachers and practitioners. I've worked with coaches and therapists. I've worked with a shamanic practitioner. I've received energy healing sessions, including emotion code and Reiki. I've received massages targeted at emotional release and healing. I've received cranial, sacral, polarity, and hypnotherapy treatments. I've also utilized guided meditations and visualizations, guided tapping practices, and I've taken classes from countless yoga teachers. All of these tools and techniques have helped me find greater comfort and ease with who I am, to heal old wounds, to uncover old stories and beliefs, and to release things that no longer serve me. And as each of those layers is shed, I've become more and more comfortable and confident using my authentic voice. Maybe you're familiar with some of the techniques I just mentioned. Maybe you're not. It might feel like an overwhelming list of techniques and you have no idea where to start. First, I want to remind you I've been on this journey of focused personal development for over a decade. I didn't utilize every single one of those techniques last week. I've added tools and techniques to my toolkit over time. Some become long-term habits. Others I may work with for a more limited period of time. Here are a few suggestions to figure out which technique might be the right one for you to work with right now. Is there one that just jumps out at you? Maybe when I said the name of a technique, a great big yes just bubbled up inside you. Perhaps you've heard about a specific technique mentioned five times this week by different and unconnected people. Start there. Maybe nothing sticks out to you right now. Try pulling up a list of energy healing techniques or hopping over to the transcript of this episode at nourishnestbreathe.com forward slash P25. That's P as in podcast and the number 25. Place your finger on the name of each technique and check in with your intuition. Are you getting a clear yes on any of them? Start there. Be open to synchronicity. Maybe you meet a friend's roommate. They happen to be a Reiki master and you get a great feeling about them. Consider booking a session with them. Still not sure? Book a personal roadmap discovery call with me. I'll add a link in the show notes and I'll help you navigate the resources out there to narrow down the list to a few techniques that might be a good fit for you. When you work with anyone, you should feel safe to be you. If you don't feel safe, it's a sign you need to find another practitioner. Here's a great opportunity to practice using your authentic voice and simply thank them for their time and let them know they're not the right fit for you. We covered a lot today. To recap, In order to confidently speak with your authentic voice, you need to not only identify, but also release the old stories which have been muffling that authentic voice. Identify your cheerleaders and work on building your confidence through using your authentic voice with people you feel safe with. Release not only the mental restrictions on your authentic voice, but also any physical ones as well. Don't forget, I've put together a yoga sequence to help you do that. You can find the link in the show notes or check it out at nourishnestbreathe.com forward slash P25. That's P as in podcast and the number 25. And finally, there are countless different techniques which can help you release some of these things mentally, physically, and energetically. Seek out practitioners and techniques that resonate with you. The more you speak with your authentic voice, the easier it will be to do so with confidence. But, just like any muscle, it takes practice to build up this strength. Offer yourself the grace to not always get it right every time. 
You're human, and that means you won't always get it right on the first try. Thank you so much for joining me today for this episode. Please hit subscribe wherever you receive podcasts. If you've got a question that you'd love to hear addressed on a future episode, please submit it using the form on my website at nourishnestbreathe.com forward slash podcast. I'll include that link in the show notes. And remember, living your best life isn't about changing your life. It's about changing the way you show up for your life. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Solicited Advice to Live Your Best Life. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to leave a rating and review wherever you subscribe to your podcasts. Your rating and review makes it possible for other people just like you to discover this podcast. And don't forget to check out all of my free resources at nourishnestbreathe.com forward slash resources. I'm sending you a great big hug. You've got this.